In this video, I'm gonna show you step-by-step step one of the most important things when starting a SaaS company, which is accepting and managing payments. When I first started building software, this terrified me. I tried watching YouTube videos on it, which just confused me even more. And frankly, I didn't know what all this techno garbage was like web hooks and backend workflows. It seemed like everyone was just spitting out a bunch of random words, which was making me second guess my decision of becoming a developer. But I came across a guy named Gregory John who simplified it for me and helped me learn this five-step process that I'm about to teach you. So before I give you a step-by-step -step tutorial, we need to define all the tools that you're gonna need. The first one is a Stripe account, and this is what you use to actually accept and manage the payments. Then you're also gonna need a Bubble.io account, on at least the starter plan. This is what I personally use to build all of my SaaS apps. And now here's the super confusing part I'm gonna simplify for you. A webhook is kind of like a URL, but it sends information between your two apps in response to a specific trigger that you set. And a workflow is just a specific automation we set up to trigger once a certain action happens. Normally though, workflows are only triggered when the user is on the page the workflow has been assigned to. So a backend workflow is a workflow that's gonna trigger no matter what page the user is on. So now you know what all these things are, and we can hop into my computer to show you exactly how to set up and process payments for your SaaS app. So we're going to be setting this up on the Netflix clone that I built with no code. If you want to see how I did that, I'll leave it as the first link in the description. And the first thing is to create the user interface of the payments. So we're gonna hop into our Stripe dashboard. I'm doing this on test mode, but it's the exact same thing if you do it in your regular Stripe account. Then we're gonna come over to all products. I've already created the three products that I need for the pricing table. And then we're gonna come over to pricing tables, create a new pricing table. And we're gonna add the three products that we want in there. And then you can go ahead and change your style go ahead and hit continue and then the one thing we're going to change instead of showing a stripe confirmation page we're going to click don't show confirmation page and we're going to put in the url to our home page and then make sure to put that on all three products that you put into the pricing table and then you can go ahead and finish now we're going to add the html of this pricing table to your dashboard and bubble so that users can go ahead and check out so just copy the code and then bring it over to your checkout page, add an HTML element. We're gonna center it in the middle. And then go ahead and paste your HTML in. So now you can see it right here. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is link when a Stripe payment gets processed to put that into our database because this is gonna allow us to make sure that only users who have paid will be able to access the site. So you wanna go into your database and create a new data type that's called subscription. And you only need two fields in this. The first one is gonna be call it active and that's going to be a yes or no and then the second one is going to be your stripe id and that's just going to be a text and then you want to go over to your user and add a subscription data type just call it subscription and then you want to add your stripe id for the customer so we have two different stripe ids we have the subscription stripe id and then we have the customer's id so what we're going to do now that we have the database set up is go to backend workflows and start a new API workflow. And then we're gonna come over to developers within Stripe, go to webhooks and add an endpoint, select events. And this event is going to be called checkout session completed. So you add that event, we can come over and call this API workflow the same thing. You wanna check these two boxes and switch the parameter to detect request data. And then we wanna say detect data, copy this, and then paste that link into the endpoint URL right here. So after that, you can just add endpoint. And now it's gonna be listening for the data. So what we do now, what you do now is go through your whole user signup flow. And then this right here, we can just choose any package. And I'm on test mode, so you can just put in all four twos for the card number and then hit subscribe. And as long as we did this correctly, it's gonna not only redirect us to the homepage, but it's also now initialized this API call we want to look for the object subscription. So now we're going to go, the action is going to be create a new thing. We're gonna be creating a new subscription. Active is yes. And the Stripe ID, you click request data, and it's the object's subscription. And then we want to make a change to the user and add the customer Stripe ID and the subscription. So the subscription is gonna be result result of step one and the stripe customer id we're going to once again do request data and it's going to be called object customer 
And then finally, the last thing we want to do is go back to the is go back to the webhook within Stripe, go to the end of it, and remove initialize. Because you're no longer initializing it, you've already initialized the webhook, so now it's the real thing. So now we're creating subscriptions for our users, but we need an area where they can go to cancel their subscription, and we need to send that data to our backend in Bubble. So we're gonna go to our account page, and I'm just gonna add a button that says, manage subscription, add a workflow. This is going to go to an external site. So now you're gonna go back to your pricing table and go in the settings, copy this address, and go there. When we're in the account view, now you click manage subscription, and it brings you to the page where they can manage their subscription. But now we need to send the data from Stripe to the back end when someone cancels. So we're gonna go back into developers, go to webhooks, create one more endpoint, and this one is going to be customer subscription deleted. So same thing, go to your backend workflows, create a new API workflow. Once again, check both boxes, and then detect data. We're gonna go to detect data, right there, and then add endpoint. And now once again, we need to go in and run the action to initialize it. So now if we cancel plan, and then we go back here, we have initialized the API call. So what we want to do is once again, look for, so this one's gonna be called object ID. The subscription number is the object ID on this one. So we're going to make changes to a thing, and it's gonna be the current user's subscription. So active is now no. And then once again, we want to go back to the webhook and delete that backslash that says initialize. So now the users can create and cancel their subscriptions. All we have to do is redirect users who do not have an active subscription. So the way we do this is from the home page, add a new event, and it's gonna be when the page is loaded and the current user's subscription active is no. It's going to go to the page, redirect for activate subscription. On this page, it just says, wait, you must activate your subscription first, and then it has the pricing table. So now, remember my subscription is currently inactive because we just canceled it when we were initializing this call. We just have to click preview, and then as it loads, it's gonna redirect us to this page so that any user who is not paid or any user that has an in inactive subscription won't be able to see the content inside of your site. So now you know exactly how to accept and manage payments within your SaaS company. So if you want more tutorials like this, click the subscribe button down below. I'll be posting a new video every single week.